Thank you, William. Good morning, everyone. Bill White is ringing our church bell this morning. My name is Nat Bothwell. I'm the pastor here at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Slater, Iowa. And you're watching our Sunday morning live stream for this second Sunday in June 2020. A few announcements are altar flowers this morning are given to the glory of God by Ann and Dwayne Johnson in celebration of their 40th wedding anniversary. Ann and Dwayne, congratulations. We thank you for the gift of these flowers and for your faithfulness in the life of this community. Uh, to everyone out there, as I, as I talk, I invite you to send a word of congratulations to Ann and Dwayne. Thank you. Our condolences also this morning to our friend Cindy and her family on the death of her mother, Carol. Carol died peacefully on Tuesday. A service is planned this week for immediate family and will host a drive-through reception uh, this Tuesday evening at 5.30, from 5.30 to 7 p.m. If you'd like to pay your respects to the family, you'll have an opportunity to do that while remaining in your car. Uh, we'll just enter through the southeast parking lot and exit through the West Alley. That is on Tuesday from 5.30 to 7. Cindy and Don and everyone will continue to hold you in our prayers. And we're sorry for your loss. A very special this welcome this morning to Micah Ott and family. They're sitting right here. Um, this morning, Micah will be baptized. He'll be clothed in Christ and claimed for God's purpose in the world. We're live streaming that event this morning. Micah's family is joining us here in the sanctuary, and I mentioned earlier this is the most, the, the, this is the most people we've had in this space since mid-March, uh, so it feels like a lot. I think we're still less than a dozen, uh, but welcome everyone. Uh, also have a lake update. One moment. <laughs> Joyce and Mike and Julie, Denny, Jana, Mallory, uh, greetings at Clear Lake, uh, Kim Reed and Kansas City, welcome. Uh, welcome also Lori uh, at Lake Ponderosa and Kim in Southern Iowa. I, for, oh, I forgot Stephanie, Stephanie in New York, New York City, we think. Uh, welcome and thanks for helping Lucy get online this morning. Welcome Norma and, and Oren, I know you're out there. John is at Leech Lake. Bill and Julie, welcome, welcome, Kathy. Friends, our service begins this morning with a word of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our service always begins with a shared time of confession and forgiveness. Here we name the reality that we all fall short we, fall, we fail to trust and believe. We fail to love and to show mercy. We name the brokenness that is our reality. And here we ask God for God's forgiveness. We ask God for help and strength and grace, a new start. Church, if you know these words, I invite you to say them with me. Gracious God, forgive us, renew us and lead us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, amen. Friends, in the name of Jesus Christ and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself in the waters of baptism. You free us from sin and death. You free us for loving and serving others. Pour out your love into our hearts, O God, that we may live as faithful reflections of you. To the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, 
the ninth and tenth chapters. Thank you, Jacob and Ayla, Diane and Micah for today's reading. Uh, they are here. Uh, they are here in, in two different ways. Um, so a reading from Matthew. Jesus went about all, all the cities and villages, teaching the, in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and cure every disease and every sickness. These are, These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Aphias and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out the demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Well, a few years ago, I was traveling with some seminarians and we were headed to Tanzania. We went with one of our professors at Wartburg Seminary. We were there for three weeks. We flew into Kilimanjaro and we flew out of Dar es Salaam. You can imagine a group of seminarians in Tanzania for three weeks. We experienced our share of worship services we were there to confer an honorary doctorate to a retired bishop of the Lutheran Church in Tanzania. And the day before that service, he sat down with us. It was a meet and greet. And he started to ask us questions. And he said, so you were all seminarians? And we said, yes. And Lord willing, you'll be pastors. And we said, yes. And you'll marry people, and you'll bury people, and you'll teach, and you'll preach. And we said, yes. And then he said this. He said, and you'll heal people in Jesus' name. And we said, yes. <laughs> and I, uh, I looked at my friend Steve, uh, because I hadn't had that class, and I was pretty certain he hadn't had that class either. We'll heal people in Jesus' name. I still remember that conversation. I had never imagined a God so big. The bishop's question exposed the limits of my own Western thinking, a way of thinking that prioritizes reason and data and most likely scenarios. For this bishop, God was nearer than that, more present and more powerful than that. I'd never dared to imagine in the same way. Jesus sends his friends out this morning. He gathers them together and then he sends them out. Go and share the news, he says. God is not so far. Go and heal. Go and cleanse. Cure and cast out. Unsettle the world in life-giving ways. Jesus calls his friends together and he gives them that mission. Now just to be clear, these 12, 
they aren't exactly all-stars. They're not great scholars. They aren't people of means or influence. These 12 include tax collectors and fishermen. These 12 will stumble. Peter will deny Jesus three times. Judas will betray him. Thomas is something of a cynic, if nothing else, pragmatic, almost to a fault. Jesus calls this bunch anyway. And the mission at hand is nothing short of extraordinary. Jesus calls these disciples to shake up the world in ways that promote life. By healing the sick and raising the dead, Jesus calls these disciples to stand with the least and the lost, the harassed and the helpless. Go and cure, he says, every disease, every sickness. Can you imagine the faces of those disciples in that moment? The bishop in Tanzania, he was entirely sincere with his question. It was a theologically sound question. With God, all things are possible. Even the extraordinary, even through the most ordinary means. All of scripture testifies to that. So what if God is act actively stirring in the world still? Including right now. What if God is stirring in the work of justice and peace? What if that God is still all about healing and curing and casting out demons? Demons like racism. Demons like greed and hate and false witness. Jesus calls these 12 imperfect as they are, ordinary as they are, just as Christ gathers God's people still today. I believe that. Micah will be baptized in just a few minutes. In this time of pandemic, in a time of unrest, in these days where creation itself is a little sick and in need of healing, we are celebrating a baptism this morning. God is not so far even in all of that. And the call that is Micah's own call this morning. That's the call of the one baptism we share. That's the work of your baptism and mine. God doesn't need you to be extraordinary. God needs you only to be willing in all of your ordinary. God's nearness is yours by way of this Christ, already at work in you. Freely you receive that, Jesus says. Now freely give it away. Let's pray. Gracious God, you are nearer than we know. Call us to you. Call us to lives of purpose and truth, not for our sake, but for yours. Make us useful in your work as you continue to breathe life into a hurting world. Open our hearts and our eyes, open our imaginations to the reality that you are not so far away. You meet us where we are, O oh God, exactly as we are and your presence is more than enough to do the extraordinary. We thank you for the ways you are unsettling us still, stirring up life right in front of our eyes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We need you here too. Okay. Okay. I'm fogging up. This morning we gather to celebrate, among other things, the baptism of Micah Ott. This is our first ever live streamed baptism. I know it's yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In baptism, God frees us all uh, from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of Jesus himself. We were born children of a fallen humanity by water and the Holy Spirit. We were reborn. Children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Micah called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God. Do you desire to be baptized into Christ this morning? If so, respond, I do. I do. Angela and Kevin, as you bring Micah to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities which you've lived into already, which you are living still. Responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and to nurture him in faith and prayer so that Micah may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, caring for others and the world God made, and working for justice and peace. You promise to help Micah grow in the Christian faith and life. If so, respond, I do. I do. I do. Jacob. As Micah sponsored, you promise to nurture him in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help Micah live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. If so respond, I do. I do. People of God, do you promise to support Micah and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, and for everyone out there with a keyboard. I encourage you to respond, we do. We do. And include any emoji you'd like to include in that. Blessed are you, holy God. You are the creator of the waters of the earth. Your son, Jesus, promised to send the spirit to us that the world may know you, your peace and truth. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, and breathe new life into Micah this morning. By your spirit, adopt us all as your children. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I need you to approach the water. Micah, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me get that. See? You wear it well. Yeah. This is yours. Micah, child of God, you have been baptized by the Spirit of Christ and marked with the cross of Christ forever. This is a gift from the congregation so you can remember this day. Always, and reflect on your baptism, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works to the glory of your Father in heaven. Amen. Angel, let me let you hold that. Micah, we have been encouraging your friends out there to send you notes this week. I hope your mailbox has been filling up. We celebrate your gifts and God's work in you. Micah is one of our confirmants who will be confirmed in October. And so it's been a real privilege to walk with you in this last year. Uh, we, we love you. We're, you make us better. We're glad to have you as part of this community of faith. And we celebrate God's work in you even now in the midst of everything else. God is busy doing a new thing and you are evidence of that people of Bethlehem, the peace of Christ be with you all. 
Let's share signs of peace with one another safely from a distance. Peace. 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 Peace be with you all. And you can blow that out. And we can go back to our seats. You've been baptized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Micah. This is his. This is your baptism certificate. This is my marching order. This is my marching order. <laughs> <laughs>